The first point I want to make is that the contour lines of the utility function are called indifference curves. So from now on, I'll use those two terms synonymously, the contour line of the utility function or indifference curves. So what we were doing before with x and y and contour lines like this, these are called indifference curves. And th the term makes sense because we have two points on a contour line of the utility function, then they give the same utility to the consumer, and therefore the consumer is indifferent between those two bundles, and so it makes sense to call them indifference curves. And one of the main assumptions that we used in order to generate indifference curves of the sort we did in, in the previous lesson was to assume that more x increase utility and more y increase utility. One can refer to this as a more is better assumption. But it's not true that more commodities are always better. In fact, sometimes our economists are accused of just assuming that that more stuff always makes people better off, but that's that's not the case. So we need to think about how to model a situation where the more is better assumption doesn't hold. There's a more technical term for the more is better assumption. The, the, uh, the more is better assumption means that preferences are monotonic. And so we want to discuss here what non-monotonic preferences might look like. In other words, preferences where it's not always true that more is better. <clears throat> so the example I want to pick supposes that you've got pinto beans on one axis and lima beans on another axis. Well, suppose there's some level of pinto beans here, which has the following characteristic. If you have less than that amount of pinto beans, then an increase in pinto beans leads to an increase in utility. But if you have more than that amount of pinto beans, that's really too many pinto beans. And if you still got to keep on eating pinto beans, then an increase in pinto beans leads to a decrease in utility. We're going to make a similar assumption for lima beans. That with a fairly low amount of lima beans, increases in lima beans lead to increases in utility. But with more lima beans, that is in this, in this region over here, we've got increases in lima beans leading to decreases in utility because that's really too many lima beans. And we want to look at what the indifference curves look like in in this situation. Now on the bottom left hand part, monotonicity still holds. More both goods is is uh, is better. And so we're gonna get the same the usual kind of downward sloping and difference curves that we had before for the same reason that we had had it before. Let's look at this region. And I want to sketch the contour line. So I want to find another point in this region which has the same utility. And I don't know where it is. So I'm going to go in an arbitrary direction. Up, down, left, right, it doesn't matter where you start. I'm going to start by going up. For no reason, I could, I could just as easily have picked another direction, but I'm going to start by going up. So this is my new point. Now what that means is I've increased lima beans, which is on the vertical axis. And increasing lima beans here, I'm in the lower part, so I'm in this region. So increasing in lima beans increase utility. So in the open circle, I have more utility than this dark circle where I started. In order to sketch the contour line, then I have to decrease utility in order to get back to where I started so I can draw the contour line. In order to decrease utility moving left or right, which is pinto beans, well, to decrease utility, I have to increase pinto beans. That's what this says here. To decrease utility, I have to increase pinto beans. So 
I'd increase pent-up beans, moving to the right here, to some amount, I don't know how far, but as long as I move enough, I'll get back to the same level of utility I was at before. In other words, the initial vertical motion up increased utility, and so then I had to decrease utility by moving to the right in order to get back to where I was before, and therefore the contour lines here look like this. How about here? Again, I'm going to start with an arbitrary deviation. Up, down, left, or right, it doesn't matter which we pick. I am going to pick going to the right. Going to the right, that means more pinto beans. I'm in this region where more pinto beans increases utility. So I've increased utility. In order to sketch the contour line, I have to go back to the same level of utility I was at before because the contour line show, uh, links points of equal utility. So I have to reverse the increasing utility that I've experienced by moving lima beans. So I need to decrease utility by moving lima beans. How do I do that? Well, this tells me here that to decrease utility with lima beans, I need to increase lima beans. So I'm going to do that, increase lima beans. And if I do it enough, I'll get back to the same level of utility I was at originally, and therefore the contour lines here look like this. Take a final example over here. I'm going to again pick an arbitrary uh, direction in which to go. Let's see, I think I'll. Why don't I decrease lima beans to start out with? Okay, so what I've done is to decrease lima beans. Now, I'm in the upper region, so I'm in this region here. Increase in lima beans to decrease utility. I've decreased lima beans, so that means I've increased utility. Let me write that down. So what I've got is an increase in utility that I have to counteract by going either left or right. I'm in this region here. So to counter on that, I have to decrease utility, means, which means more pinto beans. So I go this way to more pinto beans. Putting all this together, you can see that the indifference curves are positively sloped in the upper left and lower right, and they're negatively sloped in the upper right and lower left. So the contour lines would look something like this. Now, they're not going to be perfect circles, but there are going to be closed curves that look like that. If we label them, let me say u1 is less than u2 is less than u3. It's easy to see which is the worst utility uh, levels, the lowest indifference curves in the lower left hand corner where everything's the same as it usually is. So this would be U1, this would be U2, this would be U3. So thinking about this as a three dimensional object, U1 is lowest, U2 pops out from the screen more, U3 pops out from the screen even more. So you see it looks kind of like a mountain. This would be the peak of the mountain. Its interpretation is the maximum utility, because if you deviate in any direction from that point, your utility is going to go down. You should think through that to see how that works. We have a name for this point. It's called a satiation point. A synonym is the bliss point. Okay, bliss point because that means you're as happy as you can possibly be, and that is the point of maximum utility. Satiation point, uh, satiation comes from uh, eating, the idea is you've eaten too much, uh, you're satiated, you've had enough to eat, uh, more food isn't going to make you better off, and so that's also an appropriate name for that point. We're not going to be talking about non-monotonic non indifference curves, uh, or non-monotonic preferences, 
many more times in this class. There are some old exam questions on it. Uh, I'm not sure if there are any homework questions on it, but there are some old exam questions on it. One can, for example, have only one commodity that's kind of like pinto beans, and uh, the other the other commodity is uh, a standard commodity where more is better, and you can see what that kind of graph looks like. The, those those kind of contour lines look like. But for the rest of this course, we'll basically be concerned with situations where the more is better assumption holds, and therefore the indifference curves are the standard downward sloping shape that we studied last time.